The next part of taking a journey is to possess. Every journey includes a job to do. God will never bring you to a place where he doesn't intend to use your unique talents and gifts and personality and experiences for his glory. He's put you here, and this is where he wants you to be. We talked a little bit last week about community and about being used where you're at. Too many times we think we're in a temporary place, and we say, well, once I get to my permanent place, that's when I'm going to start serving God. God says, possess the land where you're at. He's got you exactly in the place where he can do mighty things through you, if you just let him. No situation ever takes God by surprise. He's not going, man, I didn't see that one coming. They ended up in rifle. Oh, man. You know, I don't know what they're going to do now. Okay. He's got you right where he wants you. And it may be as simple as, I want you in this season of your life to focus on knowing and loving me more. Maybe that's it. Maybe right now God is just calling you to hang out with him for a while. It may be as big as you are going to be the spark that ignites revival for Christ in this valley. And that means embracing the community that you're in. Whatever it is, you have to possess it. I can't tell you what that's going to look like in your life. But what it means is to get involved, to invest, to invigorate those people around you with your gifts, and to just go all out while you're here. Possess the land. And the last part of the journey is to persist. Paraphrasing that great theologian, Yogi Berra, the journey's not over until it's over. The crossing over the Jordan into the Promised Land wasn't the end of the Israelites' journey with God. It was a delayed beginning. It occurred on the 10th day of the first month on the same day of the year as the passage of the Red Sea. It was the 40th anniversary of that glorious miracle. That's a long enough journey, don't you think? But as I just mentioned, the journey wasn't over. They still had God's work to do. They still had to possess the land. And that's going to take, what, a couple months, maybe a few days at the most. Maybe then they just settle right in. Anyone know how long it took before the land was divided for each tribe of Israel? Well, in Joshua 14, it gives us a little clue. And this occurred as Joshua was dividing up the land as God instructed him to do once it had been subdued. Joshua 14, 6 through 12 says, Now the men of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my brothers who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day Moses swore to me, The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses. While Israel moved about in the desert, so here I am today, 85 years old. That's a long journey. That's a long journey that you're waiting for a promise for, from God for. And even after the day they crossed over the Jordan, that was five more years in coming. 45 years since stepping into the land with 11 other spies, knowing when he came back to give his report that with God on their side, they would conquer their enemies. He was ready. That guy was ready. He could taste it back then, but because of the faithlessness of the ten spies, he had to wait. Still on a journey, still faithful, still following God wholeheartedly, 45 more years. But listen to what Caleb says in verses 11 and 12. I'm still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. Sometimes I get up out of bed and I go, man, I feel creaky. I can't move very quick. You go out on that soccer field and I, I, was, I was demonstrating one drill. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die. 
Here he is, 85 years old. And he's ready to fight. He's ready because he knows the God who sent him there. He realized that his faith journey, his unchosen journey, I mean, he wouldn't have done it that way. He was ready to go in 45 years before. It certainly wasn't a cruise line journey. And he realized that nearing the end of his life, that it was also a short journey as well. You know, I'm sure there were times when it seemed like wandering in the desert. He goes, man, I told those guys. I told those guys. And he's, he's suffering for their faithlessness. But he's still faithful to God. And I'm sure some of that time seemed pretty long. But then on that day, he's looking back and he's 85 and goes, man, that just zipped by. That just zipped by. And he was saying, I'd do it all over again if asked for my God. Because the commander I serve is worthy to be served. And I put my whole life in his hands and I've never regretted it once. I'm ready, he's saying at 85. And, and it turns out he had to kick a few guys out of that land that God promised him, even at 85. He still had a little, little grit in him. Well, friends, we are on a journey too. And it, and it really is a short one. I know in the midst of the battles that rage, it may seem unending and that you might not make it, but I know that he who directs my paths is faithful. He's got it all planned out. And because I'm his child, he's working all things for good in my life. However, if you don't have Christ in your life, your journey is more like just kind of wandering around. There really is no ultimate purpose or direction or assurance that anything good will come out of your life. And one day all of us are going to make the biggest passing over of all, passing over from this life into the next, into eternity. And we're going to realize just how short this journey really was. Without Christ, that eternity will, will be forever in darkness, separated from love, from God, complete emptiness. But this life can have real purpose and real excitement, a journey with an end that we can't even imagine. To wake up every day and be excited and ready and secure in God so that we can take risks and step out and battle for Him, that's the kind of journey that I want. And that's the kind of journey we all can have if we let Christ take control of our lives and of our future. What a great adventure that can be. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for this time. God, what a great time to be alive. We're in the midst of uncertainty. Economically, we don't know what's going on. Around the world, we see chaos. And that can be a little scary, but I just thank you that we're here right now. That you, the God of the universe, who has chosen to live with us, to step with us day by day, has said you want us by your side. God, thank you for that. And I pray that as we journey on, that you would just stay close to us and help us not to wander away from you. So many times I look around for where you are and it's me who's wandered away and you've been right there all the time. God, I pray that you would help us to prepare for journeys in our lives, that we would, we would be ready to serve you. God, I pray that we wouldn't shy away from passing over from whatever we're doing right now to new experiences with you. That God, when you put us in those places that we would, that we would just possess the land we're in, that we would serve you wholeheartedly. And God, help us to persist. So many times I feel tired and I feel run down. God, help me to just keep my eye on you. Thank you that you've promised to be there with us. And we thank you that at the end of this journey, someday we're just going to be with you, right in your presence, just hanging out with you. God, what a great ending to a great journey. 